You know, I'm starting to think that Katarina might actually be not that smart. Hmm. Anyway, we're here to talk about the most recent episode of Hamefura, so I hope you guys are ready. But before we get into that, I do, as always, want to give a big thank you to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter. At Janeme, at Luna da Otaku, at Fiery Kathy, at Matt87 Eagle, at Anzoff97, at Clear Chicken, at Tenko Yai, at Bubble Lubber, at Kisachan94, and at MHeart069. Thank you all so much for sharing last week's video over on Twitter everybody, and if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Hamefura video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout out the first five of you in next week's video. So with all that said, before we dig into the video, I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe, look at them actual ships. Okay, so we are now gonna go ahead and dig into things. Now, I gotta say, going through the episode, like, as, as we've been doing, uh, I'm changing stuff up from the way I normally record videos. I'm going through the episode uh, bit by bit. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Let's go ahead and start with Katarina still trying her damnedest to outfox that dastardly Prince Gerald, even though it's not going to happen that way. Like, that's the thing. By now, you would assume that she would have calmed down, but that's the power of Bakarina, is she's actually so dense. She's such a black hole of a character that she is so dense that she not only pulls the other characters in, but isn't aware that she has pulled the other characters in. There's no shot any of this ends with actual doom for Katarina, but she's trying to stay on her toes because she doesn't know that. So Bakarina is doing her best to, you know, be on top of the whole Doom thing. And it's funny, too, the way we see it, she has her uh, her family's gardener, Tom, I believe his name is, make, like, a genuinely very real-looking fake snake, right? It looks super real, to the point where I was like, oh, man, my boy Sun Wukong is not gonna like the opening to this episode. It was, it was that real. It was that real. And she's actually gotten pretty good. She, like, Katarina in, in another life, in her third life, would make for a pretty good baseball star. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and headcanon that whatever show has female baseball players in it, whatever anime might have some girl baseball players, um, or specifically a pitcher, it's, it's Katarina from her third life. Confirmed, just so you guys know. And yeah, that's the thing with this episode, right? Is we see Katarina, like, in this little vignette where she's making sure that she stays on top of throwing snakes at Gerald. And then throughout the rest of the episode, we see more vignettes. The entire episode could realistically be called sort of a filler episode in the best kind of way. And before anybody says anything, look, I'm not saying filler in terms of the, the light novel because you guys know me. I don't care if it's in the light novel or not. I truly don't. My, when I say filler, I just mean a little in-between break. Fleshing out the characters while we take time between one storyline moving to the next. The whole story arc from the last couple episodes was building up to Katarina finally bumping into Mar Maria. We've already had that, and we had the resolution of that happening, where Maria is now closer with her mom. So we're moving into a new storyline, one that I have to assume is going to be following Serious Deke. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be following, I assume, not, not so much following him as like the main character, but I mean like a storyline that will have him playing what I have to assume is the antagonist. We'll get into it a little bit later. But yeah, this is just like a filler episode. Let you know what happened during summer break as we transition to the next part of the story. That's what I mean by filler. I don't mean filler as in anime original content, because again, I don't really care if it's anime original. I just care if it works well in the anime itself. I don't care about the light novel, care about how it works as, as part of a, a greater narrative in terms of the anime itself, not the light novel, the anime, the thing I'm watching. I hope it works well there. And spoilers, it does. This is a really pleasant episode. To prove said point, let's go ahead and move through the vignettes, shall we? We get the whole, um, the vignette uh, that makes me laugh, I think the most, is with uh, is with Katarina's mom, which is like, it made me laugh, but it was also kind of sweet. Um, since you see Katarina's mom like thanking, um, oh shoot, I forget the maid's name. Um, the really nice maid who's always kind of hanging out with Katarina, trying to keep her in line. Uh, Katarina's mom, is like, hey, I, I really appreciate you 
going above and beyond taking care of, of Katarina. I know that's not easy. And the the maid is like, no, nah, if it, honestly, like, no, it's not easy. But don't get me wrong. But it, it's my pleasure. Honestly, since Katarina bumped her head and her whole personality shifted, and it's, it's almost like she became a totally different person. But ever since she bumped her head, like, it's not only helped her become a better person, but it's actually brought something out of the other people within the house like tom the gardener um the the maid who is good at cooking whose name i forget uh but it's it's bringing out these kind like a different side of these people it's it's bringing quiet reserved members of the kleiss household out of their shelves uh out of their shells and actually allowing them to sort of be fleshed out as actual characters as they likely weren't in the original uh the original Otome game that this world is based off of and it's nice to see Katarina's mom say, like, that Katarina bumping her head and actually, like, becoming a nice person allowed her to open up and actually have genuine conversations with her husband as they don't really feel the pressure from Katarina anymore. And Katarina has actually made the Kleiss household a better place. Uh, a lighter place, if, if, if I could use the, the phrase. But um, the thing is, she never gets to say that because every time she tries to say made the Kleiss household a better place, uh, Katarina starts shouting, heave ho! Because she's like literally farming in the background. And Katarina's mom just shouts her ear off because, yeah, that's their dynamic. But you know, f like now we have confirmation. Like, look, this came from a good place. Like Katarina's mom only screams because she cares like sometimes when i get mad at shows that i like or characters that i like i'm only doing that because i care you know what i mean like this is good parental like she's just trying to keep katarina in 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 line because she knows that katarina has made her life better so she wants to help her make katarina uh, she wants to help katarina make her life better uh but you know doing that from a noble point of view and i don't mean noble as in like how righteous i mean noble as in like the group of people i think you knew what i meant we also get nice little vignettes as well throughout the episode uh there's a great moment with Keith, uh, Keith having like a nightmare, like little baby Keith. We actually get a flashback to the kids, like uh, back when they were like the kid version of themselves. Uh, so yeah, we get to see baby Keith having like a nightmare. And Katarina says, as long as she's around, like she'll be there to make sure that the nightmares go away. And then Keith never had another nightmare again, uh, which doesn't seem possible, but, <laughs> but let's pretend like it is because it's really sweet. Uh, we also get a lovely scene where they go uh, book shopping with Sophia. Uh, there's a very big hint at something that I will get to at the end of the video. Um, and also they sort of push the Nicole, uh, Katarina dynamic and uh, Nicole, or Nicole as people want me to call him, uh, Nicole, he's fabulous, holy shit. I, I melted in my chair when he said, I was like, Jesus, if, if he got that close to me, I think I would have melted too. Um, and like if him or Mary got that close to me, I would just melt. <laughs> like I'd be like, ah, oh. but yeah, cause, cause those are my faves. But, um, well, all these characters are my faves. That's the thing, right? Cause I'm always like, this character is my fave. And then one of the other characters will do something. I'm like, never mind. That character is my fave. Like I just said, Nicole's my fave, but really I'm like, no, Alan's my fave. No, Gerald. No, Keith. Damn it. <laughs> like, I don't know who is my fave. There's too many faves. Um, like Katarina's my, my fave girl. No, Maria. No, Mary. No, Sophia. I can't pick. Like, they're all so great. And, and yeah, we get tons of little vignettes, but the one I think that made me laugh the most is Prince Gerald's vignette. Uh, Prince Gerald gets this little moment where he arrives at uh, the Kleiss estate, and he says like, hey, Katarina, I was thinking about going down to the lake. I was wondering if you'd like to come with me. And I was like, oh, look at my boy being charming. A little Prince Charming, That's how, how sweet is that? And so of course, Katarina's like, yeah, sure, why not? And she, cause she feels safe around him, even though she's like concerned that like doom is going to befall her, she still feels safe around him, especially since we know by the end of this vignette, she's safe enough to sort of like lean against, like, like fall asleep against the car door. And I'm not gonna lie, and like say what you will like about her being stupid but katarina looked adorable that like i was like oh my god katarina kind of fine like when she was leaning against the thing and like sleeping i was like oh my god she the my heart skipped a beat she actually is kind of fine but anyway <laughs> the kang get in this little cart and they uh i say the gang spoiler uh, <laughs> gerald and katarina get in the the cart and they go 
uh, towards the lake. And Keith, of course, runs up and stops them because he found out through the grapevine that Gerald was alone, so he's definitely gonna go try to get together with Katarina. Keith puts the kibosh on that, and then uh, once they actually get to the lake, everybody else is there too, because Katarina invited them. I don't know how she did that that quickly, but it's what she did. And this leads to the best bit of the episode, and that is where the show puts these characters into boats in pairs. Boats, pairs ships they're ships they put them into ships like straight up like i was like oh my god like it, it like it took me a second so i was like oh this is this is interesting like the characters are trying to argue over who gets to be in the boat with katarina very very cute blah 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 and then i noticed i was like huh they put keith and gerald in a boat together and they can only have two people in a boat that's weird that's one of my ships well, I'm sure that's nothing. I'm sure that's that's dismissible. And then they show Maria and Sophia, and I'm like, huh, that was one of my low-key ships. I wasn't gonna even mention them in this video, but like, yeah, that, that's one of my low-key ships. I've been kind of like feeling Sophia and Maria because I feel like they'd be really cute together because they're both so kind. So I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting, interesting. Oh, Alan and, 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 and Nicole. So that would mean Katarina's with Maria. Oh my God, these are all my ships. Like straight up, I'm not I'm not screwing with you. Like these are like who I would ship each character with. I was genuinely like, oh my god, that's actually who I ship these people with. Like, cause Alan and Nicole, like specifically with with Alan, I really like him with Katarina, but Katarina, I kinda like her best with Maria, because I like Maria best with Katarina as well. Um, although Katarina I also do ship with Maria a lot as well. And and Maria I again, like I said, I ship with Sophia and it, it's it's a vicious cycle like like it spins the mind the amount of multi shipping at play here But if you had to tie my hands together and you forced me like you must pick like like gun to the head pick So it's like okay Yeah, it would be it would be what they showed it would be the ships in the ships like it it is what it is And I'm so baffled they did that like that absolutely blew my mind that they actually put them into my ships crazy the other things that I'm, I'm just gonna wrap these up like real quick uh but we get serious uh serious deke is giving me again just antagonist vibes getting weird vibes from from serious i thought maybe they were trying to push like oh maybe serious is like aromantic or asexual or something oh that's cool no he's just giving me bad, bad vibes <laughs> like like i thought that maybe that's what it is but nah like the way that they framed that scene like the vibe is like nah he's an antagonist of some kind and the other thing that I gotta mention is, uh, yeah, Sophia is definitely Achan. I don't know who Achan is, I don't even know her real name, but that dream that Katarina has is very clearly Sophia. Like, super clearly Sophia. And Sophia herself even says, like, during the book shopping trip that I mentioned earlier in the video, like, I feel like we've done this before. Like, I, I can't help but feel like we've definitely danced this dance before. Now, Katarina remembers her past life, but I don't think Sophia does. Like, I think Sophia doesn't remember being Achan, but she has vague memories in her dreams, like a sleeping subconscious of being Achan, which would mean that Katarina, if that memory clicks and she notices Sophia doing something, it's possible she might realize that Sophia is Achan could maybe wake up that subconscious memory and actually kind of trigger that personality to resurface. Interesting thought. It's an interesting thought. With that said, everybody, I'm going to wrap up my thoughts here. Very glad I don't read the comments anymore because if the last thing I said is any indication, uh, there's going to be some spoilers in today's comment section. So it's a good thing I don't read the comments anymore. Anyway, with that said, question of the day today, what's your favorite Otome game? Uh, I need to play more Otome games, honestly, so I would love to hear yours. Let me know in the comments below. And with that said, we've reached the end of the video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then don't forget to boop the up snoot and share if you care. And if you want to see me rambling even more, then feel free to follow me on Twitter or join our good folks Discord, both of which are linked in the doobly-doo. Lastly, if you're feeling generous, consider checking out our Patreon page to help support this channel. Speaking of which, I'd like to give a big thank you to our lovely patrons such as iZevi, Alex, Andrew W, Branson C, Calvin A, Crowbar of Irony, Daniel G, Deep Not That Deep, Digger the Fox, Dominic G, Emily, Ionos, Urza, Ginkotaku, 
Godzilla fan, no for nothing, Maria T, Marshall B, Mater, Mirth Mouser, Nymad, Cell, Shadow Creative, Stephen G, The Suavest Orange, Tristan G, and Veridan. Thank you all so much for your continued support over on Patreon, and once again, thank you for checking out today's video. Hope you guys have a lovely day, and until next time, you stay classy, Anytube, and wash your dang hands.